What's going on y'all? It's your boy Cool Colas here and you are now tuning in to a new video on my channel. But before we get all into the topic, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Go ahead and hit the like button, hit the share button so you can share this with everybody that you know. Also hit the bell icon so that you get notifications for whenever I create new content on this channel. And at the very end of this video, make sure you leave me a comment. All right, y'all, so for today, for today, we need to talk about that damn good times trailer. <laughs> you know, I almost don't even know where to start, y'all, but um, I don't know if you all have seen it. I've seen the shit. I wish I didn't see it. It was awful. And not only was it awful, it was a hate crime. It was a hate crime against foundational black Americans. And we really need to talk about what the problem was. Before I get into it though, actually, let me start off by talking about the original series. So, for those of y'all who do not know, I'm a 90s baby, so I am young, but I did grow up watching Good Times. My mom used to watch it all the time, so I used to watch it with her. And the show Good Times, it had its tropes and certain things that were anti-black in it. I mean, you had JJ and he basically was a performative coon and you had Florida who was the ghetto snob and really, the if, I, if I'm being honest, the villain of the series, she fucked up everything and didn't allow them to get out of the hood because of all these little decisions that she was trying to make and trying to act like she was better and um, mightier than thou. And um, I mean, y'all's asses was basically almost eating dog food. Um, so she was a problem as well too, but there were a lot of good things about good times because you had Michael Evans who was very pro-black. He was a young man who was pro-black and I think he actually was a very good example of somebody who I think a lot of young black men could emulate because of the fact that he, you know, was a, that same age, but he had like a very black centric mindset. Um, and then there was also James Evans, who was this masculine black father. I think that he ha he told that line of um, being able to be a the, just the image that I want to see, which is uh, in today's media, which is a, a black man who's masculine, who has a black wife, who takes care of his family, takes care of his kids and also is uh, not masculine to the point where he's an angry Negro, but masculine enough that you know he was respected as a father and as a man so i think that that image also was very powerful as well too so that's why i said that there were some good things about the original good times but this shit that i just saw this trailer for good times was a motherfucking abomination and nothing else but a motherfucking abomination i mean i can't even believe that well, I can believe that this is being being greenlit, but it just baffles me that we've gotten to this point in society where they like some of some of the coons in our society have allowed the white supremacists to think that that shit is going to fly, you know, and obviously this was made by somebody who was white. Let's be real. Like this whole thing was that was 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 made by somebody who was white. But the fact that they have taken our culture and have made us into these exploitative degenerate images just it's just beyond me it's like um we're not even about to watch good times we're about to watch like good times next generation the minstrel show because that shit was a modern day minstrel show i mean think about it. you had the drug dealing baby you have the loud ghetto black women i mean you have like um, the the dusty niggas like literally every single thing in this trailer show negative images of black people and it's weird because they kept all of the black exploitation shit from you know back when you know good times basically was airing while still adapting to modern tropes like modern society's tropes and let me tell you what I mean by that in the original good times you had Michael Evans you had JJ you had James Evans, you had Florida Evans, and then you had Thelma. It's almost as if they recreated the same family structure, except the fact that the dad was not pro-black. The dad seemed like he was on some dusty shit, 
and like he was like one of those like old niggas. That's kind of what it seemed like. And then when it came down to the the character that was supposed to be Michael, which was I think he was replaced with a black woman, like a, or a black girl, and she seems to be pro black, or at least that's the image that they give. So for me, that's that's giving that's giving controlled opposition. You know, you see these movies where or TV shows where the black girl or black woman is real pro-black and she's standing up to injustice and things like that and all the black men are either lazy or they're silly Negroes or they're coons or they're performative or they have no backbone. So that's a modern trope that's been played as if to say that black women are going to be the backbones of society to lead the charge in trying to you know, create black empowerment, whereas the black men basically are going to be incompetent and are not worthy of someone following their lead. So when I saw this modern black exploitation minstrel show, I said to myself, this shit is a hate crime against black society because it's like they literally took all the bad things like the anti-black tropes that they try to create today and then mixed it with the stuff that they had back in the past and that's why i brought up the whole thing about the black chick being pro-black because i'm like it's interesting how they they made all of like the black males and then even some of the black women real goofy real performative but then they have that serious element and the serious element is the pro-blackness that you see in the black girl which to me, that's a problem because it's continuing the same narratives while acting like you're staying true to the old ones. But everything that you're staying true to is everything that's anti-black. And that puts black men in a bad light and to some extent also puts black women also in a bad light as well too. Because in a lot of these controlled opposition movies, as I said before, they usually make it where the black woman, although she's pro-black, she seems to still either be dating interracially or she's LGBT, or if she's not doing either one of those things, she's talking about how much she hates black men or the way that black men have done her. So it's almost as if they add this element of, although they're talking about somebody fighting against white supremacy and racism, there's this element of, of having all these other little things in the background that throw salt on this idea of pro-blackness. But if you look, there's a trend because in movies like The Hate You Give, you see that, in movies like, um, there there was a recent movie, uh, Leave the World Behind. I broke that down on Instagram. That There's also that trope as well too, when you look at the daughter um, who was in the movie. And you know, there's a lot of other ones as well too. Queen Sugar, the, that TV show also has that trope as well too. You know, you have uh, the other black girl, there's like an element of pro-blackness to the main character, but it's really just controlled opposition. It's not true pro-blackness because she's interracially dating. So you have all these different scenarios. And I'm wondering if they're going to do that same thing as well too, because it seems like that's what they were going for. But that's the main thing that I paid attention to is that they had this modern day minstrel show that was going on in the background. So they showed all these images of us in a degenerate way while keeping certain black, the image of certain black women to be the backbones of society to change the degeneracy that we saw all around that and I really did not like that because they took out all of the other good things about black society I also am getting really fucking sick of this exploitation of foundational black American culture like we're the only degenerates in society like we are the only culture that has degenerates in society the reason why that gets on my nerves is because it's totally untrue as a matter of fact we do the least degenerate crimes. I mean, we're not out here trafficking kids. We're not out here committing a lot of mass murders. We're not out here creating uh, mass interracial crimes. So we're not going and killing off a bunch of white people in the suburbs and in these rich areas. We don't do shit like that, you know? Um, and on top of that too, a lot of these cultures that get lifted up as these pristine and clean cultures they have all types of degenerate things that that um go on and i especially appreciate people like uh tariq nasheed who on twitter he shared quite a bit um some videos where there were um indians you know a lot of them in their culture they were tying their women up uh you know the trees and beating them and and then uh, bro kicking their women like Sheamus on WWE and shit. Like they just had all types of stuff that was 
uh, that they do in their culture that we as foundational black Americans don't even do. So I'm tired of this narrative to, 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 of, of society taking our lowbrows. And when I say society, I'm talking about the white supremacists taking our lowbrow and then exploiting that as if that is who we are as a majority, like that, like so much of us is us being degenerates. When the reality is, is that they're just using social media as a mechanism to prop up us as being a degenerate race of people. When the reality is, is that a lot of these other communities, including the white supremacists, matter of fact, they may be the main ones even, have tons of degeneracy and have tons of low brows, and they never get propped up, and they never get talked about. So I want to make it clear that. This move, this uh, because I think I'm getting kind of far off the topic. This trailer showed me that the coons of our society have made them comfortable with creating these false and disrespectful narratives about foundational Black American culture. I stand with the individuals who want to boycott this movie because, or this, I'm sorry, I stand with the individuals who want to boycott this TV series. I stand with them because the reality is that we've got to do something to stop these images from going out there in mass and then children watch them and people think that is cool and they end up emulating the things that they see. So I stand with the people who want to boycott this nonsense and showing it on TV. In the meantime, we as black people need to, again, divest from this type of media and create our own thing, create our own platforms, create our own content, and stop buying into this shit, stop watching this shit, stop tuning into this shit. We need to make it clear that this is not acceptable. Messages like this are not acceptable to portray about black society. We need to make that very, very clear. Now, if they don't do anything, that just shows their racism. But the, the, what we need to do is stand up to show other people that when we make noise about these types of things, we're teaching them what we should not accept from other cultures that try to take us and appropriate us, make disrespectful images of us, and then still make money off of that. We need to make it very clear what we do not support and what we are not cool with. The same way that the white LGBT, they quickly got on that um, Jeffrey Dahmer um, a move, uh, the series that they did on Netflix and they were saying, oh, don't make that a part of us, although it really was because Jeffrey Dahmer was LGBT and there are, uh, uh, there's a vast history of white LGBT slave owners who have done terrible things to black people and were big time degenerates in society. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just trying to make the point that we need to speak up about when our culture is being disrespected and that 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 trailer that i saw for for good times that was sheer disrespect that was glorified bay bay's kids and i'm not cool with that and neither should any of you all who listen to me or tune into me and hear everything that i have to say anyway y'all that's all i got for today i wanted to share that with you all i hope you all got something from this video you know, leave your thoughts, comments, and anything else that you need to say to me below. I'll make sure I get to them once I get the opportunity. Other than that, I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all's day, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.